Hi, folks. Welcome to Just Ask George. I'm David Wolf, affiliate banker with BH Capital. I'm here with the one and only George Lovato, Jr., the president and founder of BH Capital Limited. A very uh, delightful segment ahead of us now. Joining us uh, is one of your associates, right, George? Why don't you set this up? De La Chapelle, a mm -hmm. friend of mine coming up on over 20 years, I believe. And we go back to, uh, I, I believe it was uh, the early to mid-90s. So I'm, I'm yeah. actually not that old, and neither is he. He's a very young, tall, handsome man. Hey, you know. Uh, very well connected in New York and uh, has been my mentor, advisor, uh, soothsayer, and uh, oftentimes a listening ear uh, in many different projects, and we've worked together on a number of different things. So, Philippe, how are you this morning? I'm very well. The only thing I would add uh, to your very gracious introduction, George, George, is that <laughs> you recall back then, we were wild and woolly. We were a lot younger. I probably had a little bit more hair than we have, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, our friendship has certainly tested the uh, the time and and uh, and, it, and continues to grow. I might add. We we've seen a lot of people come and go uh, in and out of the industry, have we not? We have seen a tremendous number of people getting together on all kinds of levels and ultimately finding out uh, that uh, perhaps they're not suited for each other. <laughs> and I have some serious <laughs> thoughts about that. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Um, you know, today I, I sent you an email the other day, and I I wanted to talk about something that I know you know a lot about, as you know a lot about a lot of things, but particularly uh, partnerships and the chemistry and the importance of chemistry in a partnership. And Dave and I have had many conversations about uh, how important that is to uh, any business when there's more than one principle involved sort of adding back to uh, the growth and stability of the business but uh, uh, the question is as you've seen it from from the bench from the sidelines in the game uh, observer participant uh, talk to us a little bit about the importance of partnerships well as, as you know, George, part of my uh, uh, one of my titles here at HT Capital is the uh, firm psychiatrist. I'm a <laughs> lawyer, but I'm also a psychiatrist. And this subject that you that you have now raised for today's topic, frankly, uh, hit a very responsive chord. Um, I can't tell you how many partnerships and businesses I've seen where people have gotten together for the wrong reasons. I liken this very much to, uh, in my study of partnerships, very much to an analysis of marriage. You know, when you, when you take on a partner, you are basically married to that person in a figurative sense, obviously, and you have to make sure that the chemistry between the two partners uh, makes some sense, that you both have the same uh, motivations, the same vision, uh, the same desire to work hard. I mean, it's great to have an idea, say, look, uh, I have a good friend, why don't we get together, we'll be partners. You know, that could be the start of a, a wonderful business, but often what it is, it's the start of a breakup of the friendship, because, you know, for any number of reasons. I mean, the, the obvious reason why you want to start a partnership is is because you share your costs and expenses, you uh, you decide you're both going to work very hard, you have complementary skills, um, and you're going to support each Good other. Point. And also, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, you know, from a, a tax point of view, you're presumably taxed not on a partnership level, but on an individual level, much like you would, say, on, a, on an S-Corp, George. And, and so there are a lot of great reasons to get into a partnership, but you all have to be on the same wavelength. And uh, time has a way of, of, of warping uh, those waves in a way that can be detrimental to one of the partners. You know, one of the uh, things you have to consider is, for instance, uh, uh, that you as a member of a partnership are jointly liable individually for what your partner does. Uh, so if your partner goes off and half cocked and does something on his own through the partnership or sometimes even uh, in the name of the partnership but for, for his own purposes, you're going to be liable personally for all those debts if your partner suddenly decides that uh, he's no longer able to, to pay for them. Uh, there are, uh, you know, are, are you the partner type? Do you want to make sure that you share 
you share your your vision and your goals with with another individual uh are you is that individual have the same work ethic that you have? And, you know, I think it was a great man that once said, you know, a uh, friendship that's founded on business is a lot better than uh, a business that's founded on friendship. And, you know, I... I oh, that's a good just, one. That's beautiful. You know, well, I don't think it's original. I think somebody else said that. The great man said that. But, mm -hmm. you know, th when you think about it, George, you and I started a, a partnership a number of years ago uh, because it was a business context. And we said, you know... And as we got to know each other, we had complementary skills. We developed together, and you know the success or not or lack of success is is not really important. The point is, we had a great shot at, at developing a business opportunity, and as a result of that, our friendship blossomed and 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 continues to this day. So that that I think we are a living example of that. I have, for instance, another friend of mine who I introduced you to, uh, Jeff Navens, who has a company called uh, Germ Free Life. You know, he has this germ-free hands uh, uh, protection for uh, all kinds of uh, bacteria and what have you. He, he, I did not know Jeff until he told me about this business, which sounded like a great opportunity. And as a result of that, we've maintained mm -hmm. the friendship, and I think I've introduced you to him and right, he has right. certain needs that he's looking at. So, you know, there are a lot of reasons why chemistry is probably the most pivotal element uh, in, a, in a partnership. And the friendship that e that is created from that very business, good point. you know, will last. And I mean, take a look at, at Facebook, for instance. So these guys had some ideas, and and look what happened. Yes, one guy became terribly successful, and the other two, who claimed to have had their uh, business ripped off, uh, sued, and what have you. It, it's really uh, very much like a marriage, and like any marriage, George and you and I, you know, I think our marriages have have lasted not I bet knock on wouldn't have another drink of that red wine <laughs> I keep in. But you know, we, we 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 took our time before we we decided on the right life partner if you will. Right. So, right. You know, so partnerships are very much that way and you have to take your time and and uh, George, I know how thorough you are in terms of your, your business dealings, what have you. It's it's best to have you know some lawyer some account that that you can trust to to draw up the the documents so that everybody can reflect on them and decide gee you know this makes sense um, I agree with everything that's in here we we do have the same uh, objectives and by the way uh, just like in any modern marriage you want to have an out clause you know if if some, something happens and what have you a prenup. Uh, thank you. A business, <laughs> a business <laughs> form of a prenup. A, a, a post-nup. You know, a post-nup. It was post. <laughs> but, you know, so that, that, that's my, I, I feel very strongly that you, you have, you know, you're, you have hit a, uh, an absolute uh, critical point in any small uh, business owner that wants to get involved with a partner because you no longer are the sole decider of your business and your future. Mm. You now have to share right, your views, right. you have to get a consensus, etc. You know, you brought up one point, are you suited to be a partner? And I'm going to harken back to the 90s and talk about uh, Shea, who had built uh, a very large uh, vertically integrated uh, agricultural business, and he'd done it all by himself. Uh, self-made man, uh, college educated. Uh, uh, I would consider uh, Shea to be, oh, you know, in the top 10 percentile in terms of intelligence and being able, uh, both smart and being able to manage on the fly and manage a number of different businesses. Mm -hmm. And Philippe and I were involved uh, in his operation and helping develop it, finance it, uh, Wow. Uh, and we, we put in literally millions and millions and millions of dollars of financing into that business. But here was uh, a prime example of an individual that really wasn't capable of being a partner, right. I think. He was very much an individualist. He wanted to be the top of the food chain and didn't want to have to answer to anybody. And yet, in order for his business to continue to grow and prosper, he was having to take on... Uh, these various relationships and he was very uncomfortable about that and I think that raises that that uh, uh, solidifies that point that you make that sometimes you're just not suited that's right and and uh, you uh, you know particularly if you uh, as Shea had built by himself a very successful business so his mindset is I can do this because first of all I've done it hello 
And why do I need somebody else now involved in my decision-making process? Because whatever that is, that's going to interfere in some manner, either constructively or destructively, with what I want to do. Why should I have to suddenly talk to partners about uh, about what I want to do? This this came up with the board of directors conversation we had in the audio uh, podcast that we did some months ago. Uh, we're, 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 do you have a prep? I mean, would you rather work with an entrepreneur, Philippe, that, that is um, amenable to listening to input as opposed to someone who's needs to operate autonomously uh, do you have a, a preference or is it possible to do it uh with more of the the um the dictatorship approach if you will well uh, let, let me put it this way uh, as a royalist uh, i i think that one should have a court one should listen and pay attention to what people say but yeah if owner, good point if, yeah. You, if you want if if you're the decision maker and you're going to be responsible for that ultimate decision someone has to do that this is not a democracy and okay. you can't you, one person can't always be right that hence yeah. that's why you want really good people around you yeah you want to have some but input yeah. that's it. you have but you have to listen to those people and, and and make sure that you invite them to speak up and give you know the, 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 their precise point of view regardless of, of what they know your interests may be your decision may be so they at least run notice you know it's like a good lawyer will say look uh, to a client uh, I will not uh, make that decision for you but I will tell you my straight <laughs> opinion about I love that decision you're about to take yeah I love and that that's, that's the right function of a lawyer or a member on, on a board or a trusted advisor, they should they should be totally unafraid of saying, uh, "Look, I think you're making a wrong decision for the following reasons," and have that dialogue. Then let that person, armed with that knowledge, make the decision. Right. Excellent, that's beautiful. You know, in in the obstacle course, uh, I talk extensively, and in this this uh, points towards Philippe's point uh, about a partnership. Uh, that started with my best friend at that time, and unfortunately, he he was uh, incapable of growing with the business. Uh, in my mind, the world's greatest salesman. I've never seen a salesman better than this guy. Really, he was he, oh, he's world you. class. He's world wow. class. Uh, and as I began to go down the path of learning more about corporate finance and being introduced to uh, people like Philippe on Wall Street and, and essentially fostering more relationships, that just wasn't his gig. You know, it wasn't that he was incapable. It just wasn't what he wanted to do. That wasn't where he wanted to be. He wanted to be out there selling the product and creating that type of opportunity. Unfortunately, the board and the shareholders expected him to uh, come along with the rest of us. To show up in the other way as a partner. Right, and that didn't happen, and that was ultimately... uh, But that that speaks to the point, best friends becoming partners, and uh, you know, that... uh, I mean, although we still speak, we're cordial... uh, 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 you know, yeah. we're not the best of friends anymore because right. of that business. Right. But you know, George and David, one other thing you might consider is sometimes uh, a a, uh, a relative uh, decides that they'd like to go into business. You know, you have a an uncle, a son, or whomever they want to get right. into business. And there's a major difference between getting along with someone on a social or relative basis as opposed to getting along on a business basis. And so those strains of running, you know, of, of, of running a business uh, can totally torpedo family relationships. So don't just think that because you're linked by blood, suddenly, uh, magically, uh, that link will provide the best partner for you. That whole subject of family dynamics, and I'm sure you've dealt with a variety of family businesses, what are some of the the, the possible obstacles in that dynamic, and, and how do you suggest a family business enterprise approach them, Philippe? Well, the, the most recent one I dealt with, and I told them the, the psychiatrist here in the firm, was, uh, <laughs> was a divorce. Now, that's a, there, there's a partnership. Yeah, oh, God. Right? Right. And a uh, you know, guy had found himself from uh, Chippy somewhere and decided that he was going to you know, uh, have a new relationship, and his wife objected. So they're, they're, that, that <laughs> did not work. Uh, and, and it t- 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 she t- had the audacity to object? I already had the audacity to object. <laughs> or, you know, some guy, some... some, some, some yeah, so 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 uh, in family situations, and uh, unfortunately, we tend to deal a lot with 
dysfunctional families, I call them, because there are all kinds of, you know, there, there, there may be one, uh, one sibling that works a lot harder in the business and hopes to inherit uh, the mantle of the, of the founder of the business. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of tremendous jealousies. Uh, one gets paid to literally stay away, to stay out of the business. I've seen so, that time and time again. You know, that, ha- that happens a lot. And so from my point of view, you know, what you need to do is to bring uh, some objective, uh, impartial observer to come in and try to explain that, look, we understand that there's a, fi- there's a family dynamic going on here, but it's totally dysfunctional. It's not helping the business. And if ever you want to find an exit strategy, what have you, you want to grow the business and make sure you have solid management in place. I mean, George has written books about this stuff. So if you, if you want solid management, then make sure that you don't favor one over the other, but it's, it's a merit-based situation. If there's someone that's capable... Just as in any other environment would be. Uh, you know, you, you have to measure, be able to measure people's performance at the same time reward them accordingly but mm. let, let me ask you one question Philippe is is there a methodology is there a way to sort of define and sit down and ask the key and critical questions of, of one or you know of the, of the two partners the three partners is there some way to sort of get that out on the table is there should there be some rules that be drawn up early is that something that's you can do collectively how how do you test the strength of the partnership before you go through the time trouble and trepidation to form it and then essentially commit to one another without really knowing what the strengths uh, of that relationship Beautiful. have the capacity for George I'm, I'm gonna touch on a subject that's near and dear to your heart. <laughs> it, it's called dating. Remember before you got married to that wonderful lady? Yes. You spent, you spent a lot of time talking to her, talking to others, and, and, and making up a list of the pros and cons about that person. So when you're starting a relationship uh, as important, uh, both emotionally and financially as a partnership, you should really sit down and in writing put down all of the elements that, are, that you know, what is exactly, what is your vision? How hard are you going to work? How much time are you going to spend on this? Good How much point. money personally are you going to put on the line here? And, and, and really go through a whole checklist of, of items that are absolutely critical in your mind to having a, an organization that can start functioning at least, you know, if they all adhere to the principles you said. That right. Do it in writing and get your lawyer to do that and, and get an account to bless it because, you know, you guys are totally crazy. You don't understand how these numbers work. But get the Collectively and, sort of compress all these yeah. thoughts and feelings together from all the different yeah. parties. Yeah, and by the way, this is not nuclear science. This is a lot of this is just common sense. But unfortunately, what I found is that uh, common sense often uh, escapes a lot of close friends. That's why I said the thing early Good on point. that you know, if, if if you have a friendship based on a business, that's one thing. But the base of business just on the friendship because you're friends and oh, you you sure you can get along. That that doesn't cut it. You've really got to understand what it is you're going to be doing in this new uh, mode that you're about to enter into. It's going to have a direct impact and perhaps a dramatic impact, good or bad, on you and your family. Once again, you have shed a 10 million candle foot light on, uh, and done it in such a way where you know really distilled it down to some very simple ideas that and practices that i think uh, uh can be very useful for people forming a partnership absolutely whether uh, on the one, on Wall one street la- or oh i'm sorry yeah, George, one, go ahead. and one last thing philippe um uh, just as a parting thought when a partnership does go bad are there any quick fixes or any uh tools that one can utilize to begin the repair or uh, execute the uh, prenup or the postnup. <laughs> postnup, yes. I, I'd say uh, the first thing you should do is recognize it's going south, and have a uh, heart-to-heart talk with a partner, and do whatever you can uh, between the two of you, as two business people, to get together and say, okay, it's not, it's not Wait. working. Again. Let's try and resolve it. Keep the lawyers out of it because lawyers like to litigate, get paid by the hour, and all that. They mm-hmm. Stay the hell out of the courts. Interesting. Just just get get together and say, okay, it's not working. I need to have a change. And then when one person leaves a partnership, there's no longer a partnership by definition. So let's let's be grown-ups here and, and resolve it yep. fairly and get on with our lives. Fantastic. 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 Oh, that's great, Philippe.
Philippe, thanks again uh, for coming on Just Ask George. And uh, like I said, uh, you put a tremendous amount of light on something that needs to be discussed and examined in detail long before you get there. And uh, I think uh, this is the sort of advice that our listeners are truly going to enjoy. Absolutely. So thanks again, bud. I appreciate well, you. Thanks guys, for joining us, Philippe. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. And um, uh, I really uh, enjoyed the uh, the experience. Excellent. And remember, folks, you can get more uh, interviews just like this at uh, www.justaskgeorgeradio.com or bhcapitalltd.com. Or you can go to obstaclecoursebooks.com and, and uh, link to the other two sites. But Excellent. for Steve Garth, you wouldn't be able to do all those wonderful things. If it wasn't for Steve, none of this would exist. <laughs> Philippe, thanks again. <laughs> Steve thanks, Garth, thank you. It's htcapital.com if anybody needs to get a we, we Absolutely. Thank you for uh, reminding we want, us. We want people to know that Philippe is available as psychiatrist and corporate finance advisor uh, from htcapital.com. htcapital.com, folks. Thanks. We'll see you next time on Just Ask George. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah.